Hello everyone and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 as Sir Theo Bracken, who is now the Lord of Bloodstone. And yes, we had a lot of adventures back in Mountain Blade, but now that we are back, uh, or now that we are Lord, I should say, we're back in Crusader Kings 2 and there's so many things to talk about. You guys uh, had some great suggestions uh, concerning name, uh, name for our Villian Steel Sword and also great suggestions for characters that I finally managed to actually get into the game. So I'm very excited for this. Now, I should mention that I'm not actually entirely happy, I guess, with the characters itself, in a sense that I think they're too overpowered or they've they've been a little bit overkill, but I did not want to delay this video any further with, you know, another rules video, so that's kind of, that, that won't be boring. So, I've accepted your characters for now, I hope that I did not forget anyone, but it, it's possible that I might have. Uh, we have tons of new characters, we're going to go over them in a second, but I just want to mention that um, as the, if this series actually progresses a little bit longer, um, or if I start a new series, there will definitely be a new, I guess, kind of set of rules concerning custom courteous. But for now, I've just accepted everyone pretty much as is. So, uh, I think before we actually have a look at our custom courteous, there's uh, tons more things I want to uh, look at. First of all, obviously, we're going to have to talk about Theo Bracken because uh, in the comment section, you guys have actually talked to me and said, you know what, maybe he should also get this trait and this trait um, from his time back in Mountain Blade. And I have, well, you got, two of you guys actually have me convinced to accept two new traits for uh, Theo Bracken. The first one is the adventure trait, which basically just shows that this character has a background as an adventurer, which means that they uh, have, well, I actually know, what, what does it say? It means that they have somewhat more ambitious. Well, I don't know if that's necessarily true, but we definitely have, as Theo, had our time as adventures. We have been a sellsword captain for about uh, one and a half years now, so I definitely think that this fits. I don't know if we're actually more ambitious, so not, not sure about this, but it actually helps us quite a bit if, we, if you can see 20% uh, extra levies. That's huge. 10% max manpower, this is going to help us out quite a bit, especially as Lord of uh, the Meager Isle of Bloodstone. So yeah, I'm very happy that we've actually picked up this trait. And the other trait that you guys uh, suggested was the trait Robust, which for some reason is called Brawny in the game. Um, so this obviously shows that the character is, I, I guess, f more physically brawny, whatever that means. But obviously, well, apparently that seems, or seems to mean he's more robust or just stronger in general. And because I have... Uh, improved um, Theo's Iron Flesh and also his agility, I think it kind of makes sense because he just grew stronger. I mean, yeah, th there's not much to say about this. So I accepted this trait as well, which is going to help out with our health and also with our martial and diplomacy. So yeah, overall, Theo has gotten a lot better, but I guess that makes sense. He was a pretty badass guy. Now, obviously, another thing that I uh, wanted you guys to help me with is uh, finding a new name or was finding a new name for our Valyrian Steel Sword and you guys came up with tons of great suggestions and before I reveal the name that I've uh, chosen in the end I quickly want to uh, you know give you some honorable mentions now obviously there were uh, suggestions like uh, vengeance and justice which always work but to me they sound just too generic I mean they're great names obviously justice wielding justice or vengeance is is good uh, and it, it certainly makes a lot of sense for our character but I felt like that's a bit, yeah, as I said, generic. So I wanted something that sounds a little bit more unique for our character. And then, um, obviously, th there were actually four kind of names that I really had to decide upon. Uh, one was Redeemer, uh, which I s think just sounds cool. But then I decided, well, I thought about what is it, what is there to redeem? I mean, we didn't do anything wrong, and, and to me, redemption just feels like, you know, you're, you've been on a bad path previously, and now you try to redeem yourself, and that's not really the case was, uh, with Lord Theo, so I felt like this name doesn't fit. And then we had three names uh, left that I just, uh, all, all three of them I found so amazing, it was really difficult for me to choose, and I was thinking about maybe, uh, you know, giving this up to vote, but that would have, you know, prolonged the series again, so I decided I'm just going to pick one myself, it was really difficult, but the three last names were Seven Curses, Bloodstorm, and Steed's Edge. And I found them all so great, but in the end, I decided we're going to go with Bloodstorm, simply because our sword, indeed, is is very... 
well, fast, so it kind of is like a storm, and at the same time, it cuts through men and obviously, well, spills a lot of blood. So I felt like this would work, uh, or this would fit very nicely, so I've picked this. And as you can see, I've also changed the description of this sword. So uh, uh, as you know, uh, it's a short Valyrian steel sword with a curved crossguard, which is the one thing that is so, you know, uh, important about it. As you can see, it has a curved crossguard right there. And it is obviously forged from the metal of four daggers by the blacksmiths of Kohor. So this is what's important about the sword Bloodstorm, which is going to be the ancestral uh, heirloom of House Bracken from this day uh, forward. Now, this is all I had to say about my character and about a Vivian Steel Sword. And now there's one more thing that I want to talk about before we actually go ahead and uh, have a look at our new custom advisors. And that is um, our wealth. Now I actually have transferred our money from Mountain Blade to Crusader Kings. But obviously it's much easier to make a whole lot of money in Mountain Blade than in Crusader Kings 2. So I decided that every 200 coins, every 200 money I guess, that we have in Mountain Blade will transfer to one ducat or one gold dragon or whatever we have, one golden coin in CK2. So we ended up with about 20,000 um, uh, gold coins in Mountain Blade and that transfers about to 200. But we should obviously remember that we still have the uh, ruler of New Valyria in our dungeon and he is worth quite a bit actually, about 350 gold. So this is going to be really big. And I actually based this conversion rate um, on the Valyrian Steel Quest. So it costs about if, if you take the, if you have a regular Valyrian Steel Sword and you, if you want to reforge it, it costs you a hundred ducats. Uh, whereas it costs you 20,000 in the game. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, well, how I, well, where I based our conversion rate on. Anyways, so now that we've talked about this, it's time that we actually fill our court because uh, we have lack of men. As you can see, we need to, uh, we have open council positions and we need to give out special minor titles. So let's actually start with our council positions. Now, I've already appointed a new spy master, and this guy is um, James Frey. That's his name. He is of House Frey, obviously. His father is the Lord, is Lord Manfred the Old, and um, well, he has joined us. Uh, he is pretty awesome guy as you can see he's an elusive shadow strong quick he's a skilled fighter as well a master schemer and obviously because of this i've decided uh, since he has 30 intrigue skill i decided to make him our new master of whispers which uh, i think only makes sense but also i think uh, due to his uh, well very high dual skill i also want to make him uh, one of our uh, one of theo's bodyguards which we actually can't do here Interestingly enough, okay, I guess we're gonna have to go to the minor titles tab then and appoint him here. Okay, interesting. Uh, now, obviously, you can now see all of the other... Oh, apparently I can no longer make him a bodyguard because he's on the council. Interesting. Well, that changes things. But yeah, I guess we'll talk about uh, other things. Um, yeah, other things later on. Okay, well, uh, wow, that totally... Uh... Totally threw me off here. Anyways, now we have a lot more characters, you've already seen them. I've already marked them as interesting characters anyways, so yeah, this is not really a big surprise. We have Sir Duncan the Dragon Knight of House Fireblood. Now he is actually a bastard of Aegon Targaryen, and um, well, there's not really much more to say. He does have a weak claim, the High Lordship of Dragonstone, as well as the Lordship of Dragonstone. And uh, other than that, you can obviously see his traits. He has the Targaryen bloodline, which does make a lot of sense. But he's a little bit slow of mind. But, oh well, that's not that big of a deal. He's a pretty strong fighter. And I think, what, had, what did I have in mind for him? Right, I wanted to make him my uh, captain of the Household Guard. Right. Now, I can appoint him bodyguard. Ah, I see. Well, let's do that. He's going to be a bodyguard and he will be our captain of the household guard. There you go. Now, as for other characters, uh, I think we're just going to go down this list. We have Euron Farwind of House Farwind and Ironborn. Uh, he should actually be of the drowned... Oh, okay. That's something where I messed up. All right. Definitely going to have to check the... Uh, I'm going to have to yeah change religions here. Oh, Okay, so that's definitely something I messed up. Alright, well, 
Okay, I will do that later on. But he is an Ironborn. He is of the Drowned God. He's also he also has the Drowned trait, so he probably already died, kind of. <laughs> yeah. But what is dead may never die, but rises again harder and stronger. Uh, he's also a quite dishonorable man and somewhat of a lunatic. He's a feared raider or reaver, and uh, yeah, quite a formidable fighter. He's also somewhat of a giant. He's very huge, strong, and he will definitely make for a very good bodyguard as well. I wonder if I had anything else. No, I did want to make him master of ships, uh, since simply because he's an ironborn. Um, however, that is not possible because there is no master ship. I think you need to be owning King's Landing or in control of the Iron Throne in order to appoint someone as master ships. Uh, but I don't know. Anyways, uh, let's move on. We have Harlow Maniros. Now he is a Tyroshi, and he. He's actually follow of the Faith God, uh, Faith of the Seven. That is true. Now, um, he is unfortunately a bit crippled, <laughs> but uh, other than that, he uh, well, he's a bit cruel. I, I see, and he's a family person. He does have a brother, but his brother died, if I'm not mistaken. And then he was sent off by his father. I think he was exiled, but I'm not too sure. You can obviously read all of the character stories that um, all of the guys have left in the comment section, but I can't remember all of the things that have actually uh, been going on. But yeah, I've actually decided, due to his hobbies, that I will make him the Master of Hunt. If I just need to check my list here, then I'm not doing anything wrong. No, that is correct. So I wanted to make him a master of hunt, uh, simply because he's a good hunter and a duelist as well. And he's strong, but due to his, due to him being a cripple, that obviously, um, well, reduces his combat modifier quite a bit. A anyways, uh, let's move on to the next. We have Lord Jackson, or well, ex Lord Jackson Beesbury. Now, this guy, honestly, has it a, a bit overkill. A bit overkill. Um, he's a lunatic though, so I guess that makes sense. And he's possessed and he's also currently ill. But other than that, he's quite a formidable fighter. He's a very strong man. He's slow of mind, but still a brilliant commander. Uh, inspiring lead leader as well as heavy infantry leader. So we can definitely use him uh, leading our forces. But uh, I have... What did I decide to give him? Let me quickly check this. Oh yeah, I wanted to make him a bodyguard as well. Now I do... Uh, want him to lead our troops in the field, but since he is quite ill, I don't want to make him a commander just yet. I think we're going to do that later. Uh, let's move on to the next person. Oh, James Frey, we've already talked about him, but um, yeah, I cannot no longer make him mass, um, a bodyguard. That is a little bit uh, frustrating. Obviously, though, he is our master of whisperers, so that's fine for now. Uh, let's move on to the next Young Woon Kim, um, but he. Actually, his name is Yong Un Mo Han Kim, and uh, this guy actually has a strong claim on the Golden Empire of Yi Tai. Uh, he's also a lunatic, just like uh, some other characters that we have seen so far, and he also seems like an overall pretty shitty dude. But he is rather rich, which I guess speaks for him. And uh, other than that, yeah, there's not much uh, to say about him. He is pretty greedy, gluttonous, lustful. He's a sinner through and through, but uh, luckily we are not particularly zealous, so it doesn't matter to us all that much. Now him, uh, let me quickly see what I wanted to make him. I wanted to make him High Almana simply because of his, I guess, noble blood. He is a, a per person of great import and uh, so, yeah, he is responsible for um, the, well, handing out of the alms, I guess, and uh, yeah, whatever. It's basically just an honorary title so that he feels good about himself because otherwise I don't really know what I could use him for. I could use him as a spy master, but then again, James Frey is almost twice as good or yeah, more than twice as good. So yeah, I think Kyamana will suit him for now. Other than that, we have Logan Ninefingers, the bloody nine. Now this guy is a uh, adventurer. He's a berserker. He's one of our strongest fighters that we have, and he has a Valyrian steel weapon of his own, known as Finger Eater. Now, he actually is a disfigured man because he only has nine fingers, which uh, is why his house is known as Nine Fingers, and he's, nine, uh, he's known as the Bloody Nine. And he's, well, a quite formidable fighter, and I definitely want him guarding me. So we're going to have him as a bodyguard as well. And uh, due to his uh, commander skill, and because he's not a lunatic, I also want him to become a uh, commander. Uh, can I do this here? Yes, I can appoint him a commander. There you go. And uh, who do we have left? We have Thorin, uh, Thorin Horsebreeder. Now he's actually um, 
He's actually born, he was born in Stonehenge or in a village close to Stonehenge. So he's basically from home. And uh, yeah, he is, <laughs> he is growing very fond of uh, Theo Bracken more than we would like, I guess. <laughs> he is a bit queer, but nonetheless, he's a pretty great guy. He is a charismatic negotiator and a quick, uh, I, I guess he has quick wits. And he is at least a somewhat trained fighter, but a brave man nonetheless. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, what did I want him to be? Um, oh right, obviously, because he's a horse breeder, he needs to be our master of horse. So uh, let's actually award him with that army title right here. Yes, master of horse. There we go. Now he's going to do a really good job of this. Um, he, the horse breeder, house horse breeder is almost as good. Uh, I guess, at, at, at breeding horses, as House Bracken is. So, yeah, he's definitely going to do a good job. And lastly, we have Sir Robert. Now, he's a Westerman, and he actually joined us um, when, well, we were protecting the, uh, the caverns from the west, from the rock, while they were being raided over here in this area, uh, back in Mountain Blade. This is where we actually gained a lot of our uh, forces. This is how we met Logan Ninefingers from the north, but this is also how we obviously met Sir Robert who um, became our heavy Westerland Knight and he has been fighting for us for quite a long time and uh, we're definitely gonna make him uh, a commander because well I guess we're also gonna make him a bodyguard now that I think about it yeah I mean he's not the best fighter but now that James Frey is no longer available I might actually make him a bodyguard but no more importantly he's gonna be our commander he is a brilliant commander just like uh, Logan uh, nine fingers but he has even better commander traits he's aggressive leader a trickster as well as unyielding so he is probably gonna do the best um, so let's quickly go over what kind of titles we have left we have a designated regent left I think I'm going to make my wife uh, the Lady Shella as uh, the designated regent. Then we have the cupbearer still left. Okay, who could be our cupbearer? I think we're gonna pick, um... We're gonna pick him. Maribelt. Yeah. Alcodia. Sure. Uh, for some reason I cannot appoint him. That seems kind of bugged. Okay. And then we have one bodyguard slot left. Well, I guess, who's the best? Thorin or Robert? Actually, Robert is not as good. So I think, yeah. Thorin, you're also going to be my... You're not only going to be the master of horse, but also a bodyguard. Very good. And I think that's all for now. Yeah, okay. I guess we're just we're just going to do without a cupbearer. Now, we obviously still need to appoint a master at arms treasurer as well as a castellan. A septum we're probably not, not going to get over here, which is kind of unfortunate, but also not too important. Perhaps my daughter, Idira, might actually become septa. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, let's see master at arms first. Now, Jackson. He's a lunatic. Oh, our two best commanders are lunatics, so I don't know. I don't know if I want them to become our mass at arms. Hmm. I'm... I'm not sure. Jackson, you know what? I think I'm actually gonna go... Jackson is slow, and he has a lisp. Hmm. He's also ill at the moment, and he's possessed and cruel. You know what? I think I might actually have to go with Logan here. Although, you're on... He's a bit cruel though, but he is diligent. And he, hmm. But he's also lunatic. You know what? I don't think I want lunatics necessarily to run my my keep. Yeah, you know what? Logan, you're gonna be my master at arms. Or should I give it to Sir Robert? You know what? You are already my bodyguard. Actually, you know what, Sir Robert? You are going to be. You're a bit paranoid. But I think, yeah, you will actually make as a very good master at arms. As for treasurer. Hmm, who could we... Ah, oh, did we just lose another commander? Ah, oh, let's see if we can appoint him again. We should. We should be able to do that. No? Huh, that's very strange. Well, in this case, I guess we're going to appoint Jackson, even though he's a lunatic, but we're still... He is the best commander we have. So I think... Yeah, he's an inspiring leader. Yeah, okay, we're gonna make Jackson another commander. Hmm, this is very strange. I guess there's gonna be a couple things that change. Um, depending on who I appoint here as treasurer. I would like to pick actually you know what I would like to pick Maribel, but I can't for some reason I cannot pick these guys. I don't know why they seem somewhat bugged So who do I pick then master of hunt? Hmm Logan Or Thorin now he's actually pretty good Justicer Much better than my wife 
You know what, Thorin, you're going to be my Justice Sir. Castellan will be Logan. Sure. And Treasurer... <sighs> Shella. Yep, there you go. I think that, that, that works well. Alright, so Sh Lady Shella, you're going to uh, go ahead and collect some taxes here in Bloodstone. Uh, I want Sir Robert to actually go ahead and train some troops in Bloodstone. Then, um, uh, just as Sir Thorin, don't actually know what to do with you. Uh, actually, Logan, you're going to have to oversee the province of Bloodstone. And James Frey, I want you to actually scheme and see if you can find out about any plots. Okay, that seems fine. I don't know what to do with Thorin just yet, but we'll find out soon enough. Now, uh, one more thing that we need to do, and gee, I know I have not unpaused just yet, but there's just so many things that we need to do. Um, and uh, yeah, what I'm actually talking about is the, uh, well, our daughter. Uh, and what we're going to do with her. Now, she wants to join the faith. She's very zealous. Um, but I think I have other other plans for her. I want her to go ahead and marry uh, Sarmion Durandan. He is the current heir to the Stormlands. And, well, most important thing is that uh, they would actually accept the marriage right now. Look how much prestige this would bring to, um, to our house. Um, I, I definitely want this. Now, I don't know if we're actually going to have to pay for this. I mean, most likely, but we currently have a lot of money, and I feel like um, marrying into House Durandan would really benefit us quite a bit. I mean, they're currently obviously at war with a lot of people, so this might not be the best idea. At the same time, though, if they come out of these wars, which I'm pretty sure they will eventually, we might actually be able to, well, have a very strong ally. I mean, it really depends. It really depends in three wars right now. I don't want to actually go ahead and form an alliance just yet because that would, uh, well, drag us into a war that we can simply cannot win. But I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, once they get out of this, we actually have a strong ally. So now that we have set up everything, I think we can probably go ahead and actually move the clock. Now, this is something I did not expect we would actually be able to do this. So yeah, let's move forward slowly but surely. Um, and oh no, we freaking crashed. Don't believe it. Uh, that is very unfortunate indeed. All right, guys. Well, um, I'm going to have to end this episode here. I hope that all of the appointments I've made will be able, I will be able to save them all. And I hope that I'm actually going to be able to go forward from this day on. I don't know. It might not be possible. Anyways, I'm going to see you next time. Thank you for joining me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.